San Francisco itself is art. Above all literary art, every block is a short story, every hill a novel, every house a poem, every dweller within immortal. This is the whole truth. These were the words of the great American novelist William Saroyan about this beautiful golden city by the bay in California. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you some of the amazing places to visit if you happen to visit San Francisco. It is a popular tourist destination visited by millions of tourists every year. There are so many iconic places to cover in this vibrant city. But what if you only have few hours or only one day? The San Francisco cable car system is the world's last manually operated cable car system. This is an icon of San Francisco. Every tourist want to get a chance to ride on this cable car. But if you are really short on time, do you want to spend few hours waiting in long queue to get a chance to ride on this? It is definitely a great experience, but I would say keep it for some other time. There are so many cuisines to try and so many activities to do in San Francisco. If you are here during the night, you can explore various clubs and their famous parties. But again, keep in mind that you only have few hours to a day and San Francisco is known for its hectic traffic. You don't want to get stuck and waste your valuable time. So I recommend that you visit these two iconic landmarks, the Golden Gate Park and the historic Golden Gate Bridge. Any visit to San Francisco is incomplete without exploring the different attractions within the Golden Gate Park or experiencing the stunning view of the Golden Gate Bridge from the famous Baker Beach. Explore the Golden Gate Park in the daytime and visit Baker Beach during sunset. Based on the time, you have option 1 to directly go from Golden Gate Park to the Baker Beach. Or if you have little extra time, you can follow option 2 and stop by at the Legion of Honor Museum in the Lincoln Park on the way to Baker Beach. Within the Golden Gate Park, my favorite spot is the Music Concourse Open Air Plaza. Here you should definitely visit the MHDN Memorial Museum, also called as DN, which is one of the fine arts museums of San Francisco along with the Legion of Honor. This is San Francisco, so if you are coming by your own car, then the parking can get really expensive, especially near the Golden Gate Park. Let's start with the DN Museum. The general admission fee for adults is $10. Trust me, it's really worth it. The D. Young Museum is named after early San Francisco newspaper man M. H. D. Young. The D. Young Museum showcases American art from the 17th through the 21st centuries, international contemporary art textiles and costumes and art from the Americas, the Pacific and Africa. The permanent collection also includes graphic arts, photography and sculptures. The collections and the displays in the museum reflect an active conversation among cultures, perspectives and time periods. The museum originated from the 1894 California Midwinter International Exposition in the Golden Gate Park and was established as the Memorial Museum in 1895. The American art collection consists of over 1000 paintings, 800 sculptures and 3000 decorative art objects. It includes works ranging from 1670 to the present day. Since its inception in the Fine Arts Building, the permanent collection has evolved exponentially. Although the permanent collection is national in scope, art made in California from the Gold Rush era to the present day is also on display in the DM Museum. 
important California collections with national significance include examples of Spanish colonial arts and crafts and Bay Area figurative and assemblage art. The permanent collection galleries integrate decorative arts objects with paintings and sculptures emphasizing the artistic, social and political context for the works on display. While essentially chronological, the installation also juxtaposes works from different cultures and time periods to emphasize the historical connections between works in the collection. As part of the agreement that created the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco in 1972, the DN's collection of European art was sent to the Legion of Honor. In compensation, the DN received the right to display the bulk of the organization's anthropological holdings. These include significant pre-Hispanic works from Teotihuacan and Peru as well as indigenous tribal art from Sub-Saharan Africa. In addition to the permanent galleries, the DM Museum also displays exhibition tours. One such exhibition tour I enjoyed personally is called Appearances Can Be Deceiving, displaying the personal collections of Frida Kahlo, the revered Mexican artist. Attending this tour allowed me to take a closer look at some of her personal items, photographs and paintings that reveal the many ways Kahlo constructed her identity. After exploring the DM Museum, it is time to step out into the music concourse surrounding the museum. This is a beautiful place to unwind and relax after absorbing so much knowledge from the collection of arts in the museum. Standing 150 feet tall in the Golden Gate Park, the Skystar Wheel boasts unparalleled views from the downtown San Francisco to the Pacific Ocean. Installed in 2020 as part of Golden Gate Park's 150th anniversary celebration, Skystar will remain in San Francisco until March 2025. Another beautiful and iconic attraction in the music concourse area of Golden Gate Park is this fountain dedicated in 1924 which was made possible with a $10,000 gift from Corinne Rideout. So it is called Rideout Memorial Fountain. A statue commemorating Robert Emmett stands outside the California Academy of Sciences in the Golden Gate Park. It was unveiled on July 20th, 1919 on the occasion of the visit of the President of the Irish Republic, Imon de Valera to San Francisco as a part of his nationwide tour of the US seeking recognition of the newly declared Irish Republic and Ireland's first independent parliament. Well, if you have extra time, definitely visit the California Academy of Sciences which is a research institute and natural history museum that is among the largest museums of natural history in the world housing over 46 million specimens. It is located right next to the DN Museum in the music concourse of Golden Gate Park. And so is this iconic landmark called Speckles Temple of Music. Erected in 1900, it is now a popular feature of the Golden Gate Park used for picnics and Sunday afternoon band concerts. After spending the major part of daytime in the Golden Gate Park, especially the music concourse, I decided to follow option 1 and walk straight to the Baker Beach to catch a glimpse of the stunning Golden Gate Bridge during sunset. Quote unquote Mary Moore Mason The Golden Gate Bridge's daily striptease from enveloping stoles of mist to full frontal glory is still the most provocative show in town. Dean Jennings once said, 
I have known her for 15 years and she is more beautiful than ever. Her hair is usually a copper red and she has enormous feet. But once you have seen her bathing in the sun, she becomes a woman you will never forget. Right now I am at the amazing Half Moon Bay State Beach. But in this video, I am going to show you the beautiful view of the amazing, extraordinary Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco from the spectacular Baker Beach. Off to San Francisco, enjoy the video. If you decide to drive to the Baker Beach, the parking is free. But the parking lot can get full very soon during summer and peak hours. If you are able to take your eyes off from the beautiful Golden Gate Bridge, you can also notice World War era bunkers and artillery lined along the Baker Beach. That is, if you can take your eyes off her. Wow, she is stunning, right? The Baker Beach is a public beach on the peninsula of San Francisco. The beach is roughly half mile long, beginning just south of the Golden Gate Point, where the Golden Gate Bridge connects with the peninsula, and it extends southward towards the Sea Cliff Peninsula, the place of the Legion of Honor. The Baker Beach is part of the Presidio, which was a military base. From the founding days of San Francisco by the Spanish in 1812 until 1997, in 1904 it was fortified with disappearing gun installations known as Battery Chamberlain, which can still be viewed today. When the Presidio was decommissioned as a U.S. Army base, it became part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Which is administered by the National Park Service. Large outcrops of serpentine cliffs occur along the Pacific Coast near Baker Beach. When rising from the land surface, serpentine produces a low calcium, high magnesium soil that can allow for rare species of plants to develop in the vicinity. The Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension bridge spanning the Golden Gate, the one-mile-wide strait connecting San Francisco Bay and the Pacific Ocean. The structure links the U.S. city of San Francisco to Marin County, carrying both U.S. Route 101 and California State Route 1 across the strait. The bridge is one of the most internationally recognized symbols of San Francisco and California. It was initially designed by engineer Joseph Strauss in 1917. It has been declared one of the wonders of the modern world by the American Society of Civil Engineers. The Baker Beach and San Francisco in general can get really windy and chilly most of the time, even in summer. So don't forget to carry or wear your jacket. Now I am walking towards the north end of the Baker Beach to get a closer look of the Golden Gate Bridge. The sea water along the Baker Beach can get really cold most of the time. I had tried to swim in these waters many times, but every single time I had to get out as soon as I got in because it was very chilly. But it is fun anyways.
most of the people love to climb on these rocks to get a better visual of the Baker Beach and the Golden Gate Bridge. But during the high tide, I don't recommend this. As you can see, the waves are really strong and can hit against the rock and drag you down. As you climb along these rocks, the visuals of Golden Gate Bridge start to appear really close to you and you can really appreciate its stunning beauty. The color of the bridge is officially an orange vermilion called International Orange. The color was selected by consulting architect Irving Morrow because it complements the natural surroundings and enhances the bridge's visibility in fog. It can really get foggy here. The bridge was originally painted with red lead primer and a lead based top coat which was touched up as required. In the mid 1960s, a program was started to improve corrosion protection by stripping the original paint and repainting the bridge with zinc silicate primer and vinyl top coats. Since 1990, Acrylic top coats have been used instead for air quality reasons. An earthquake struck the bridge before it was even completed in 1935. San Francisco celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge on May 24, 1987 with a bridge walk. The bridge began to groan and sway with an estimated 300,000 people packed like sardines onto it. The middle of the bridge sagged 7 feet under the unprecedented weight causing the iconic arc to flatten. Officials quickly closed the bridge, preventing an additional 600,000 people from crossing. Engineers afterwards said that the bridge, which was built to bend, was never in danger of collapsing. What an engineering marvel she is. Absolutely stunning. The fog horns of the Golden Gate Bridge, mounted at the middle and south tower towards the side of San Francisco, may be nearly as iconic as the structure itself. The San Francisco Bay is famously foggy, and the bridge may have a slight influence on directing the flow of the fog as it pushes up and pours down around the bridge. Each horn emits a different tone at different times to help guide ships safely through the dense fog. As the time was nearing sunset, I captured few time lapses of this amazing beach, the surroundings and the Golden Gate Bridge. Enjoy the next few scenes.
The Baker Beach was the original site of the very popular Burning Man art festival and even today you can see unique art all over the beach. Visiting the Baker Beach or San Francisco in winter can be really challenging but the thundering waves really add to the beauty and of course the Golden Gate Bridge is always stunning. This was captured on a new year's day. The sea was roaring. I will be lying if I say I was not even scared for a moment. I was trembling when I saw these huge waves coming towards me. But the sight and the sound of these waves, the stunning visuals of the surroundings and the Golden Gate Bridge made me stay there and capture these scenes. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel Live to Travel. To get instant notification when I upload new videos, please press that bell icon. Like I mentioned before, if you have more time, please stop by at the Legion of Honor Museum on your way to Baker Beach. If you decide to follow this option too, then I recommend to drive your own car or call an Uber because the total walking distance can get little tiring through the hilly roads of San Francisco. The Legion of Honor and Baker Beach have their own parking lots anyway. The museum building occupies an elevated site in Lincoln Park in the southwest of the city with views over the nearby Golden Gate Bridge and the distant downtown skyline. The Legion of Honor, formerly known as the California Palace of the Legion of Honor, is a part of the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, which also administers the DN Museum. The name is used both for the museum collection and for the building in which it is housed. Dedicated as a memorial to California soldiers killed in the World War I, the museum opened on Armistice Day, November 11th, 1924. The Legion of Honor displays a collection spanning more than 6,000 years of ancient and European art and houses the Eckenbach Foundation for Graphic Arts. 
The museum contains a significant amount of representative collection of European art, the largest portion of which is French. The Ackenbach Foundation for Graphic Arts is responsible for the museum's collection of works on paper. With more than 90,000 items, the foundation is the largest repository of works of art on paper in the Western United States. Videography is not really allowed inside this museum, so I leave this to your imagination and with this collection of pictures I took. And with this, I end this video of what you can do in San Francisco if you have limited time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.